It used to be if you wanted an armchair, you bought a Buick. On this edition of Test Drive, the Regal CXL Turbo. After disappearing for a number of years, the Regal nameplate returned to a car that was heavily based on the European Opel insignia. The good news is that unlike so many transplants, the changes to the North American Regal were so small that they were all but non-existent. The headlights were slightly different and there was a Buick badge in the grille, but that's just about where any and all similarities to the old armchair of yesteryear ended. Cabin of this Regal, especially if you go with the CXL and add the optional package, has been done out very nicely. Power leather seats, power moonroof, a navigation system that actually reserves about 10 gig of the hard drive space for your own personal music collection. You'll also find a Harman Kardon audio system, again, very rich to the sound. However, there's one glaring omission. There is no backup camera. This is not a cheap car. There are vehicles that cost half as much, and it's standard equipment. The Buick shines in the manner in which it straightens a twisty road, and it does so while delivering remarkable comfort given the sportier overtones. There's very little body roll, understeer is a long way out, and the feedback afforded by the steering is both poised and predictable. These traits and the turbo's larger 245-40R19 tires combine to give the driver a true sense of what's happening where rubber meets road. Now that's a 180 from the previous vagueness that once defined Buick. At the back end, the Regal's been well thought through. To begin with, there's plenty of room in the back seat for two adults to sit in comfort. And when you get around to the back end, a couple of things I like. First of all, a proper handle on the deck lid as it should be. There's also plenty of space, minimal intrusion, 60-40 split folding rear seats and a nice large opening. The one thing that impressed me, they took the time to box these hinges. They were thinking. The up-level CXL Turbo earns a 2-litre turbocharged 4. It produces 220 horsepower and more importantly, it twists out 258 pound-feet of torque at just 2,000 RPM. The difference it makes to the drive is dramatic to say the least. There is virtually no lag time and so it hops off the line with alacrity and it maintains this urgency through the mid-range and on to serious speed. If this Regal CXL isn't quite fast enough for your blood, fear not, there's always the Regal GS. It gets a modified engine and a bigger exhaust system. Now, by bumping the turbo boost pressure up to 15 PSI, the GS kicks out 270 horsepower and, more importantly, 295 pound-feet of torque at just 2,400 RPM. It also cuts a 0 to 100K time to less than 7 seconds. Part of the reason the Regal feels alive, turbo aside, is the six-speed manumatic transmission. The first five gears are such that the engine stays in the heart of the power band as the Regal is accelerated to speed. Once cruising, sixth gear looks after the fuel economy and keeps the engine's noise at a discreet level. There's also a manual gate, although it saw seldom use because the box is best left to its own devices. The reason this Regal GS is not an armchair is quite simple. This car is based on the Opel insignia, and to GM's credit, they didn't soften it when they brought it across the pond. I don't really care for the base Regal. I do like this CXL Turbo because it adds a bit of spice. However, given my druthers, I take the Regal GS. It is true to the legacy, and that means it's got a lot more power, and it's like a habanero. It burns.